Muncher. Welcome to Muncher Movies Game of Thrones Wagers for Season 8, Episode 4. I'm Vidur. And I'm Vikram. What's up, Vikram? Not much, man. Ready to wager? Yeah. So, how does it work? Pretty simple. We start with 1,000 Muncher coins. We have episode bets that get settled at the end of every episode. We have death wagers that get settled every time a character dies. And some season-long bets that are being settled as the season progresses. We'll also be opening up these wagers to you, our good listeners. You can weigh in on a wager through comments on YouTube or social media platforms or our website. We'll keep a score of the wagers as they happen and the winners stand to get some Game of Thrones and Muncher goodies. And currently, Vikram, I am swimming in Muncher goodies because we just witnessed the Battle of Winterfell in episode 3, The Long Night. And uh, I hit some nails on the heads, much like Dragonfire hit some whites in the face. You know, like this this episode made me sort of reflect and think about why I even attempt to do this because I got I got royally creamed last episode. So you know what happens when you run out of Muncher coin, right? You got to buy some more with real money. I'm not paying you jack shit. You're paying me Muncher coin and I'm going to get some Muncher goodies and I'm going to ride wager champion on my Muncher goodies because <laughs> let's just get into it. Let's get into the settled bet. Yeah, let's do it. So number one, how many named character deaths? So we had an over-under going on this. Yeah. And I just made the cut, just if I'm literally counting, like, right? Like the last two minutes of the episode pushed you over. Uh, firstly, in terms of total deaths, not that there was any way to keep count, but the first, like, I guess, charge in this episode just wipes out every Dothraki. Now, I know some of those were named. Those are not the kind of named characters we were counting. But man, this episode started with some slaughter. It really was, man. Completely, completely just impossible to keep count of overall death so i'm glad we didn't do an overall death uh, wager here which we knew but i did have a sweet little 20 muncher coin on an over five named character deaths how many did we end up with vikram we ended up with seven yeah uh, and night king included night king included so that's what i'm saying night king and basically melisandre after that was something that just pushed you over five good guys one night king and one melisandre yep who in this episode was very much a good guy yeah, I mean, yeah, everything relied on basically. Girl. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, so you get 20 muncher coins for that one. The next one we had was a bet on a dragon off. And, uh, well, the bet was odd because you bet that it'll be Viserion versus Drogon specifically. Yeah. Whereas here it was just uh, a dragon off full power. Everyone is just fighting each other. Versus both. Versus both. So I had to say, I... I if if you pressed here, I could give it to you because Rhaegal and Viserion are the ones that actually fought one on one. I know, like uh, Drogon came and and saved the day, and as, yeah. as a result, Viserion fought him too. Also, the lighting, which has been complained about enough in this episode, doesn't make it the easiest to figure out what's happening because technically, all three dragons look very much similar. Not Viserion anymore, but in the dark, you know. No, you're right. Uh, Viserion and uh, Rhaegal sort of had most of the most of the fights. Um, but but they all three of them fought. There was this one instance where Rhaegal and Drogon collided because of the ice storm. How generous, Vikram! No so, no no result I'm, then. I'm I'm a yeah I'm That's I'm a, a good man. I'm okay. a good man. So let's just push this. No result here. The next one we had was whether we thought we would see Braun. I can't believe you thought we'd see Braun. I don't know. You I just, don't know what I was thinking, man. You just don't have any faith in Game of Thrones geography anymore. But still, he's just so not involved with the Battle of Winterfell. You did put a measly 10 coins on it. So yeah. that's cha-ching, 10 coins in my little pocket. Next, we had who is chasing Arya and the Crips. Now, this was an interesting bet. Like, we couldn't just... We both offered our best candidates. And uh, the bet is a push unless uh, unless we got at least one of those right. And... Uh, this one's a push and uh, kind of disappointed actually here because the trailer implied that there will be something really meaningful to Arya. Well, that kind of was. It's just not what we expected. And also we thought it was a crypt. It just turned out to be a library, essentially. So Yeah, but it was nobody meaningful. It was just whites, right? It was just whites, yeah. So you picked that Gendry and I picked a white walker specifically and we bet a hefty 50 coins on this one. So I'm I'm kind of bummed that this one ends up being a no result as well. You were closer than me. I got to give you that. Well, yeah, if I remember correctly, I actually wanted to bet whites, but then you thought that was too generalized, so I went for a white walker. I remember no such thing, but I'll give you, you credit don't. for being close. <laughs> of course you don't. Why don't we just move on to the next one and get this pain over for me? Oh, man? yeah, the result of the Battle of Winterfell. Ye of little faith. I cannot believe you bet 30 coins on the good guys winning. Ye that's, of little faith. That's, that's such a punt, man. 
I'm, I'm so sad I only read 30. And you know what? If if we'd like really marketed it and made it open to the public, I could have made some real coin if I actually put this out into the world and yeah. just took bets. Because... I don't know, man. I just, I just felt it. I just felt it. I felt like Cersei is gonna be the end boss, and the Night King is just gonna be pushed to the wayside, and that's exactly what happened. Dude, he died way too soon, man. Like, I'm just, I, I don't want to get into it because then I'll get into this whole rant about the episode, which I want to stay away from. Just focus on wagers. So yeah, yeah, just take my thirty coin. With pleasure, sir. With pleasure. I'm getting rich today, man. Well, finally, we get onto one which I won. You won one? Yeah, I won one. Like I won the giant? One. <laughs> uh, we put a wager on whether we thought we would see Cersei or not. Yeah, it, it kind of relates to the brawn wager yeah. in the sense, like, do, do we escape the Battle of Winterfell at all? And I remember betting yes here, just, just thinking, like, is the show going to weave in these two storylines? But but I guess not. And you know what? Cersei played the cards right, man. Like, Danny's army is just destroyed, and she's chilling off screen, just winning the Game of Thrones right now. She's she's basically wagering just like you're wagering. If it goes bad, it's going to go really bad. If it goes <laughs> well, it's just going to be awesome. So, yeah, it's, it's just basic. She's like you. Are you Cersei, bro? Yeah, only on the outside. Oh, okay. So, take my 20 Muncha coins. A well-deserved victory there. I had a different hope for the show. And uh, you know what? You you deserve one, man, after all this time. Thanks, dude. Thanks. 20 coins. I'm so redeemed right now. Can we get back to me winning? Uh, well, before that, we have an interesting wager. We, we wagered on who we thought would have the highest on-screen kill count, which was the most stupidest wager considering the episode. Oh, this is still me winning, isn't it? Uh, definitely not. Why? I had the hound. I had Brienne. Didn't the hound like go crazy at some point when he got inspired no, by Arya? No, hound was hound was shitting bricks half the time, and the other half he was just trying to save Arya. Whereas Brienne was like right there. Yeah, but Brienne, instead of being like badass and killing, she was used as like bait to show the heroic uh, nature of Jaime. I know she returns the favor at some point, but... I can't believe you're arguing with me, guys. <laughs> honestly, I cannot believe it. You know, Vikram, there comes a time in your life and you just get used to winning, you know, no. and you don't want to lose anymore. I that's, get it, man. I get it. That's what makes legends. I had I had question marks next to this wager, but I'm just going and highlighting myself as a winner because obviously... And if you challenge me on this, wait, I will wait, make wait. you sit down. Are you being serious? Yes, I will make you sit down and we'll go through all of these guys' on-screen deaths. Okay, Kiss. Vikram, let's face it. We're going to watch this episode again. I do challenge you, and we're going to keep count. And next episode, we better come in with, like, a count. At All least, right. At least approximate. All right, done. Of how many they want. Done. All right, challenge accepted. Tentatively, 40 coins to me, but it remains to be this seen. This one was 40? <laughs> no wonder you're like, oh, it highlighted, and now I'm going to put myself. Yeah. Clever yeah. move there, buddy. Take it. And then? Take it for now and go, subject to challenge. All right, done. Happily, happily take tentative 40 coins. So the next and the final bet that we placed in the episode was, did we think Tyrion had something up his sleeve? Ugh. Which, ambiguous as, as, as it was, was pretty clearly so shown that, no, he didn't. So disappointing, man. I, I bet, I mean, 10 bunch of coins, but I was so, so, so hoping that he did. Why did they show him talking to Bran? It was for Cersei? Or just wasted? I don't know, man. And again, like, the whole Bran thing is sort of not not clarified and i thought the whole brand thing would get clarified with the night king's involvement in his character fleshing out or whatever so i feel like brand still has a role to play and then that conversation with Tyrion sort of comes into play at that point so maybe maybe this applies better to one of the later episodes i guess chatting with brand now is probably just like chatting to a really 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 stone dude (laughs) yeah like he's gonna talk some crazy tales but it's doesn't make any sense it's not something you can use in battle yeah okay i don't mind losing that one i mean small bet 10 muncher coins and i guess it just points to where the show is heading which is maybe not everything needs to lead to something anymore when you only have three epic episodes left yeah and also just feeling a little good about myself with these last three bets uh let's move on to the death wagers because we had plenty of them in this episode oh this was the episode we all knew would make the death wagers relevant and it did So, we had seven named characters die in this episode, but somehow we only had bets on two of them, which means that five of them were pretty obvious in terms of outcome. And uh, why don't we walk through the ones that uh, we didn't have any bets on? Well, you and I both agreed that Jorah is definitely getting off. Not in this episode specifically, but over the course of the season. Uh, We had the same for Liana Mormont. Uh, We both felt that she was going to get offed as well. She was being set up to just be a badass in battle. And she was a badass in battle. It's amazing because she was supposed to be a one-scene character. But just the talent of that actress. And it's a pity I don't know her name. But D&D just saw the actress, saw what she pulled off and gave her this epic ending. 
Yeah. And the the other one that we had a no bet on was Melisandre, uh, mainly because we kind of knew that she was going to die, prophecies and all of that. So She said she's going to die in this town. It would have been more interesting to have a death wager on Melisandre for this episode because we didn't know where she was. So it's fascinating to me the way she kills herself. I don't know what that means. Do you? No, still don't. I think she just got cold in the end and she just I guess I guess that's that's one thing I'll be fine with if it's left ambiguous by the end of the show because it's supposed to like she's she's mysterious and magic and all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're not explaining that. That's And it's sure. it's not like she's a super major character that they need to flesh out. So whatever, I don't care, honestly. Fair enough. The other one that we didn't even bother to put a wager on was Ed. Ed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I actually thought about it when we were going through them and I was like, "Ah, Ed. Who cares?" Yeah. Yeah. Also, the thing is that we place these season wagers or these death wagers uh, beginning of episode one. So it's not like Ed was a main character who was in our head in terms of how much screen time he'll have or what his importance would be. So, you know what's really sad is that the one thing Ed tells the others, uh, John and Sam, his uh, erstwhile Night's Watch compatriots, burn me when I die. <laughs> right. And nobody burns him. And he comes back as a white. That sucks. Poor guy, man. Like, if if the whites have any sort of consciousness, like, as soon as he wakes up as a white, he'd just be like, cussing those guys out. <laughs> and then what if, like, the afterlife of a white is totally different from the afterlife of a normal person, given that the fire god and hell and the light of the seven is real? Poor Ed, man. Now his ending is, like, as an ice zombie as opposed to, like, a Night's Watch member. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's a completely different conversation about what we perceive as the afterlife of the whites. Uh, moving on to the other death in the episode, Lord Beric Tondarian. Uh, mm-hmm. It's another no bet we had. We we were pretty convinced that he was going to go as well. So overall, I feel pretty good in terms of our general predictions in terms of who we thought was going to die. Uh, so that brings us to the only two bets that are valid for getting settled here. First, obviously, is the Night King dying. I can't believe you said a yes on that. And I had a no. So you get that you get that bet with a good solid... I can't believe you said a no on that. I had so many, so many expectations from the Night King, man, in terms know, of what it was going to be. The details of this bet were that, you know, if something happened to the Night King by magic or he he became someone or whatever, then the bet wasn't valid. But I literally thought he would get stabbed to death and he got exactly stabbed to death. Yeah, so you get, you get a good hefty 20 muncher coins for that one. But... I turned it around, cancelled it out because I bet that Theon was going to die at some point during the season. And you better know that. Again, same for the 20 Muncher coins. So I guess we sort of cancelled each other out there. Yeah. You happy about that one? I think your side is a little obvious here, but I was hoping for some subversion of Theon's story. And he almost got it too. You know what? He could have just, uh, when Bran said thank you, he should have just ran the other way. <laughs> oh, cool. Like, there's not much I can do now. So. so, so just go back to being Reek. Yeah, some version of that. But I think then Yara would have punched him so hard he would have died anyway. Just yeah. if she heard about that. Yeah, I think the guys had enough over the course of the show, man. So, uh, the way he died, the the whole the whole charging at the Night King. I mean, I mean, try to take someone out before you do it. That was just like suicide, dude. Whatever it is, for a guy who doesn't have any balls, that took a lot of balls. <laughs> Wait. Wait, he does have balls. Yeah. You're talking about you talk about the unsat. Oh, you talk about Varys now. Oh, for a guy who only has balls, he sure showed them. <laughs> so that wraps up the death wages and the episodic wages for the previous episode. Oh, I didn't own you in these, Vikram. That's so sad. You came close, man. You came close, but I redeemed myself by the end. Now let's move on to a few seasonal bets that we place that are going to get settled. The first thing I want to bring up here is a bet that you refused to settle in the previous episode that is now done, dusted, established. There's no more whining and hope and optimism from your side. 50 Muncha coins locked and loaded. Who is or rather was the Night King's target? It was Bran, the three-eyed raven, the, the, the stoner on the wheelchair. The Night King walks up to him, doesn't succeed, but... Gives me fifty muncher coins while doing it. You know what I'm what I'm most pissed off about is the bet that I took. I I wagered that it was going to be John, and you wagered that it was going to be not John, <laughs> <laughs> which literally means every human being or every creature, every every character apart from John Snow. I can't believe I let this one slide for fifty muncher coins. It's not I, like there's, there's too many potential other targets. Not John leaves it pretty wide open. Come on. Well, you put your muncha coin where your mouth was. Yeah. And suffered as a result. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty unhappy about this one because it literally sets me back anything that I won over the course of this uh this episode already. The other You haven't won jack shit over the course of this episode. Of course I have. Clear. Forty tentative coins plus ten plus twenty. <laughs> 
Moving on to the other wager that we placed, uh, will name characters return as whites? Now, I want to be clear, like, what happened this episode counts, right? Of course it does. That's the only way it gets settled. Okay, done. Because in my head, it would be more exciting if the Night King, during the Battle of Winterfell, brought with him someone who returned as a white. I was hoping for Hodor. A.K.A. Hodor. Yeah. Hodor would have been awesome. That would have yeah. been perfect. That would have just scared the hell out of Bran, too. Well, not really. He's not scared of much now. Brand doesn't care, but like everyone else, like Sansa and Arya, everyone knew Hodor. So yeah. Hodor coming back as a white, and and you know, like the tons of wildlings that died beyond the wall, like all of them as well. You know who they didn't show returning as a white? But Beric, they didn't show his eyes opening. I wonder if it has something to do with the fact that he died seven times and all that. Well, also, just, just how the scenes were clustered, right? Think about it. Like, these guys literally came alive. I don't even, I don't even know what the term is. Undead. Un- undead, became undead. Just before the Arya scene happened. So it's not like they were able to show everyone who had died over the course of the battle. I guess Beric was lying alone. So Be- Beric, was, Beric was in that library or in that chamber. So it's fine. I mean, I'm sure he would have become undead. Well, the point is I had a nice little 10 muncha coin on this. And uh, I get to pocket that just to nicely round out the episode in terms of our settled bets. Let me add another 10 to my balance there. Yeah, take the 10, man. I'm just glad it was 10. I can't, I'm still reeling over that 50 on... The not jaw. <laughs> I can't get it. I don't get it. Listen, I would have bet Bran, okay? So you, you can't just, like, whine about that too much. I would have won anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you would have. <laughs> All right. That wraps up our settled bets. Why don't we move on to betting on the next episode? It's pretty interesting, man. Now, the, the next three episodes are, like, the Cersei trilogy, at least in my estimation. And for episode two, I was kind of spot on about how filler that episode is going to be. I'm going to lay some of my cards out on the table here. I think the next episode would be pretty filler. It would almost be setting up for this trilogy of episodes that follows. I think so too, because given what we've seen now, there's there's not much in terms of a major conclusion that needs to happen except for Cersei versus everyone else. So uh, given the fact that they took three episodes to come to a conclusion between the Night King and everyone else or all the living army... I think this will also be the case with the remaining three episodes. So if not the next two, but at least the next one, definitely, I feel is also going to be very filler. But filler episodes still provide for some good bets. There's always how many character deaths. So let's start there. How many named character deaths? Um, well, since we've been doing an over under here, why don't I give you a number? I think it'll be under two. Under two, huh? Yeah. I knew if I would say under three, you wouldn't want that bet. So I think under two is a good, good sort of like benchmark. This. I'll take under two. All right. How about we do 30 coins on under two? You like any other gambler, dude. <laughs> After you have a losing streak, the, the size of the bets just increases. Don't judge me and just wager with me. You're just playing like blackjack over here, basically. And play, just saying, play with me. Hit me as you keep yeah. doubling down. I'll play with you. Sure. 30. What? 30 coins for under two? Under two. Which means, by the way, you have only zero and one. Yeah. I know I'm defining under two here, but <laughs> this is an important part of any over-under yeah. bets. Yeah. I, that was that was what I was shooting for. I think I think one named character death at most. It, I'll be surprised if we see more, honestly. So, you know, when you phrase it that way. you It's locked and loaded. We moved on to the next one, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it locked and loaded? Yeah. We didn't shake on it. We don't shake. We're sitting quite quite far apart right now. All right. What, what, what are you thinking? Ah, screw it. I'm thinking I'm a man, and I'm going to take this bet like a man. <laughs> okay. And you know what? It's going to be all the sweeter if there's two character deaths or more. Yeah, of course it's going to be sweeter. I, I do love underdog bets, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why don't we move on to the next one? How many F-bombs? Or cuss words, you know, because the hound became pretty creative. <laughs> and so I think we'll know, like, past a certain benchmark. Yeah, yeah we're, we're on the same page in terms of what's an expletive here. So, uh... This is tough, man, because these these guys really really took a big hit and that would probably leave them in a sour mood. But given what we see from the preview of episode four, they, there's some good celebration happening. So I don't know what the mood's going to be. I the hound know. is alive and well. <laughs> okay. so And going to be drinking. Yeah. Then there's also Euron. And I have some hope from him. So why don't I set the line here? All right. Over three. Over three cuss words. Interesting. All right. And how much do you want to bet on this? 20 muncha coins. Ooh, it's a good bet. All right, I'll take you. So you have three and under? Yep. Okay, done. Locked in. 20 muncha coins on over three expletives. All right, done. And speaking of Euron, we saw an interesting clip in the preview. Uh, so the next wager is, does Euron propose? I saw him on his knees 
or knee on one knee mm-hmm. i doubt he has a ring he probably has like some trinket from the far side of the world that summons demons do they even have the traditional bend on one knee ring proposals in game of thrones i don't even know oh wait you bend the knee oh is he bending the knee like obviously he's not bending the knee bending the knee wait he's already bent the knee i'm so confused i don't know man this one's kind of out there What do you think? I don't know. I'll play it by ear according to whatever you think. I I I honestly don't think he's going to propose. I don't think he's going to propose either. But there's a hope. There's a hope that he proposes? What's why? Why do you care? Give me odds one time. <laughs> I want to take the underdog bet here. What are the chances you think he'll propose? Well, see, I it could only mean two things. Of course, one's bending the knee and one's proposing. I haven't seen or I don't remember any proposals in Game of Thrones where someone's going down on one knee. and asking someone else to marry them it's it's usually more crude than that yeah, uh, yeah wait 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 but we're basing this all on the fact that we see him on one knee but he could propose in the episode outside of the one knee so you know what i have a bet for you okay 2 to 1 odds he proposes 20 munch coin to 40 munch coin i bet 20 if i win i get 40 if you win you get 20 You know, I take that bet for ten because Euron's slightly off and he's really cuckoo, and I I can totally picture him proposing, uh, not in that particular scene but outside as well. But I'm I'm still willing to take a bet only if you go down to ten. You know what? Any other day I'd mock you for the, your lack of courage. Yeah, yeah. But you've taken a lot of hits today. Yeah, and it's important to have very prudent bankroll management. Whether a simple yes or no would suffice. Yeah, locked. Okay, done. Next let's move on to Cersei a little bit. Now I don't know exactly which way to go with Cersei in terms of our wagers, but one wager that we made a while ago that hasn't come to fruition yet that I want to restart for this episode is Wildfire. Do you think Wildfire is part of Cersei's plan and in particular as it relates to episode 4, do you think Cersei or anyone, Kyburn being the best candidate, does anyone mention Wildfire? Well, uh, wildfire being part of Cersei's plan is a is is it's obvious, right? Like it's a big part of her plan. Fair. I mean, is it revealed in this episode? So, in terms of mentioning, because this episode we both agree is mostly filler, it'll I foresee a lot of uh, battle prep from both sides in terms of just discussing strats and stuff. So, you know, wildfire could also be mentioned on the other side by Tyrion, for example, uh, to let these guys know or remind them that wildfire is a thing. So, I feel like someone will mention wildfire. I'm willing to go the other side here because I've held out hope before, and you know what? I've just given up on people mentioning Wildfire until it actually comes into play. I think Dan and Dave they don't make this show for the true, true fans anymore, right? Yeah, they make it for like the mass, the people who go yeah. and watch together. That's true. And so these people don't keep track of the fact that Wildfire is in the mix. So Wildfire can function as a reveal, as a surprise, and I think that might be how they use it. So I'll go no here, and I'll bet twenty muncher coins. That's fair. I'll take that bet. All right, twenty coins on you saying no that there won't be any mention of wildfire the next episode. Done. So moving on to the next wager. This one's interesting because again we're talking about part of uh, or strategies that are part of uh, Cersei's plans or or the the Northern Army's plans. Do uh, you remember Ballista? The uh, the wrestler Drax Batista. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ballista is is that. big ass arrow these guys made for the dragons oh the spear that they used in the loot train attack yeah the one that bron uses do you think someone's going to mention that they keep showing it in the opening credits yeah they do it has to play a role yeah they do wait just mention it yeah i guess or i also do you want to put a wager on someone using it uh, yeah i do if you I'm think i'm going to say no oh, on no, that then no i don't <laughs> of course not okay so now i see why you said mention i guess uh Um, I, I'm not sure where you at with this. No, I'm not. I'm not doing this again. I've revealed so much this time. I've gone first so often. We're no, gonna come up with a system. No, you yeah. haven't. Well, I don't think it'll pop up. You know, just going with the whole fact that this episode is filler, and even though the ballista is revealed in the opening credits, most people, including me, for a long time, do not watch the opening credits, and it could still be a reveal whenever it comes up. So I'm, I'm known this. I'm guessing you are too, right? Well, not really. I guess you're just applying the same logic you applied to the wildfire question as well, right? Um, f- firstly, I think everyone's watching the opening credits. I think everyone's watching every single minute of every single episode no, this season. No, I know, I know. We as fans, we think that's true, but, but but not basing it on whether it comes up in the opening credits or not. But I still feel like uh, they built it for some reason. I get it. And and that could just as well be an episode in the last episode where they use it on the dragons, right? To imply that that's what I'm at. But uh, okay, fine. I I'll take this bet because I feel like probably in the same exchange, whenever people are talking about wildfire and how how it's part of the plan, then uh, then then Ballista will be mentioned as well. So I'll take a yes on this, but I'll only take it for a low wager amount of ten coins, if you're willing. What? 
what is, what even is the point how will you ever make up for your losses 10 coins is a bet fitur it's a legit bet take where it did, or leave it where did this pragmatism suddenly come from uh well just getting my ass handed to me maybe <laughs> from there okay done locked in and i think that's kind of it from my side i mean this episode let's see man it's it's going to be the setup for a new trilogy of game of thrones finales that's how i see it we learned a lot from episode 1 that's true so we'll have a lot to go on after this episode and i look forward to episode 5 wages for sure in the meanwhile you guys the listeners Make sure you throw in your wages as well. You can hit us up in the comments or on our social media, and we'll keep track of them for you. All you need to do is wager against any of the positions Vikram and I have taken in this episode, whether it's a no bet or whether it's a bet that we've taken against each other. We'll stick to the same side, and you can let us know how many muncha coins you need to wager. You all start with a thousand muncha coins. Until next time, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>